Housing affordability has just taken another turn for the worst. 30-year fixed rate mortgage rates have just hit 7.32%. And this is if you have grade A credit. We're talking 740 points on your uh, Experian credit score. 740 Experian, uh, Equifax, TransUnion. These are for prime borrowers, right? Now, if you happen to be subprime borrower, your mortgage rate may be closer to 8%, maybe even 9%. And Fed Chair Jerome Powell is still aggressively raising interest rates with the Federal Reserve. So what does this mean for the average American? What does this mean in terms of uh, housing affordability? Also, what does this mean for the rental market? Investors are still purchasing properties and investors are still recovering from the renter's moratorium that was enforced during uh, 2020 and uh, into 2021. In fact, California, uh, Governor's, Governor Gavin Newsom is actively re in stating, or I should re, I should say, renewing the uh, renters moratorium, eviction moratorium in California. So you still have a few parts of the United States where renters are still not paying anything. And uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell raising interest rates. President Biden uh, aggressively, or at least claiming to aggressively, be trying to uh, help out the American people in terms of inflation and lowering the cost of living, making housing more affordable. But the problem is, is that a lot of the rental properties that, you know, the average middle class and even lower income American would be moving into, these rents are continuously rising. And a lot of people are scratching their heads and asking, well, why are rents rising when housing affordability is a key priority for the Biden administration? Well, there's a number of factors that play into that. One of them is the fact that many of these landlords, now that the eviction moratorium has ended, these landlords are working to increase their profit margins. They're looking to uh, essentially regain their financial footing for the countless months, potentially years, where landlords were essentially paying for renters to stay in their properties for free. Then you've got labor market issues. You've got labor market issues in terms of, okay, you have problems with your rental property. You have to get the property ready for the next tenant. Well, what happens when there's not enough labor to get the job done? Right now, we're on a job site. And right now, we're experiencing a labor shortage right now. And it's kind of funny. It's like when you're watching HGTV or any type of uh, housing-related uh, you know, do it yourself before and after kind type of program, you don't see all of the project. You, you get glimpses here and there, pretty much like in this video. You're seeing a snapshot in time of what is happening. And so, as we're experiencing all sorts of different types of uh, shortages, you know, hopefully we don't have this. Uh, fallout with the railroad workers actually going on strike and preventing the delivery of much needed materials throughout the country, further uh, increasing the supply chain issues and, and, and expanding our shortage problem. But as we continue to experience labor shortages, we will see more and more situations where properties are unable to be rented out which is creating a shortage of additional rental properties to hit the market, which is driving up the price of the existing rental properties. So imagine you're a, you're, you're a landlord, you're a property management company, uh, maybe you have an apartment complex, whatever the case may be. These properties, they require upkeep. Well, when a tenant moves out and the property cannot be properly uh, prepared for the next tenant, then that is a that is a unit that stays off of the market. And what have we seen with supply and demand? Even if you're not an economics major, we got a crash course in supply chain uh, management. Well, not really supply chain management, but we have understood the effects of reduced supply and increased demand. So what happens when there is a steady demand for rental properties, but there is a decrease in supply or even worse. What if you have the combination of increased demand as more and more home buyers or would be home buyers 
are no longer qualifying for purchasing homes, mainly for the fact that the rise in interest rates, the rise in mortgage interest rates has drastically increased how much it costs to be able to purchase a home. This is almost creating a renter's nation. The Fed is creating a renter's nation whereby the average American just cannot afford to buy a home. And so this forces more and more would-be home buyers to become renters. And so as we see this increase in demand for rental properties and rental units, the more rental units that are being delayed in terms of being released and added to the market, it is making the existing rental properties and rental units that are available more and more expensive every single month. Comment down below, drop me a quick comment. Let me know how much you're paying for rent if you happen to be renting. Now, um, this situation gets exacerbated as more and more units continue to hit the market and even worse, more and more units needing to be updated and there's a lack of supply in terms of labor. So as you have a labor shortage, there will be more and more units that cannot be rented out. And so then this creates this issue whereby the landlords or property managers are steadily trying to recoup the rental income that has not been had as a result of, of the rental property sitting on the market waiting for labor to show up. So it's a it's a it's kind of a catch twenty two. It's a catch twenty two because you you have you have <laughs> you have the government who tried to assist with the uh, eviction moratorium. There was a massive shutdown, we all know. But the backlash of that is now that most of the eviction moratoriums have been lifted, what are the landlords trying to do? Many of the landlords have not been reimbursed by the government, and they've literally allowed renters to just stay in their properties every single month. Meanwhile, the average landlord is a mom and pop. It's, 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 it's a regular person with a regular job trying to cover their own personal uh, primary residence as well as a secondary residence that they're not living in. So the help that the government provided previously ends up kind of uh, kind of biting everyone in, 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 in the butt because these landlords collectively ended up raising in, or raising rental prices across the board once the eviction moratorium ended. And even during the eviction moratorium, we saw it then, but we were continuously seeing increased interest rates. And so where there was loss, ultimately uh, created by the federal government, many landlords are trying to recoup this loss by raising rent rights. So in the face of more expensive housing costs as a result of higher and higher interest rates, uh, thanks to Fed Chair Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve raising interest rates, we also have landlords that are attempting to uh, not lose their shirts increase their profit margins now that eviction moratoriums have been lifted uh it's 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 becoming less and less affordable it was actually significantly more affordable prior to 2020 so this whole affordable housing uh, uh venture that the current administration is trying to uh achieve for the average middle class and lower income american it's really backfiring and it's getting more and more expensive. But uh, I'd like to hear from you guys. What do you see in Boots on the Ground? Comment down below. Uh, drop a like for the video if you've made it this far. And I'll see you on the next video. Take care.